everyone, this is Glenn Elliott, and in this tutorial we're going to be inspecting the inspector. The inspector is a context-sensitive area of Final Cut Pro 10 that allows you to change settings of various filters and settings and whatnot. Now, to access the, the inspector, there's a little icon here. It looks like a bunch of sliders with knobs on it. You can either click it to toggle on or off, or you can simply hit on the keyboard Command 4 to toggle on and off. Now we're going to start from the very beginning, or the top rather, and work our way down. So in this one we're actually going to focus only on the color area. This is going to be the area of the inspector you're going to use the absolute most. Now right above that you see there is one other section, and that's the effects section. And that basically will populate with effects as you add them from the effects palette. So if you grab an effect down here and drag it onto a clip, it will now populate this effects area. We just added the age paper effect and you can see it in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and click it and delete it. And now we're going to start talking about the color area here. Now before we get started, it's important to understand timeline cursor behavior and selections and how they work. Now if nothing is selected in my timeline, whatever um, clip the timeline cursor is over will actually be automatically be loaded into the inspector. So if I go here and I want to make a color adjustment, I can go in here and say go to saturation and drag the saturation down. You see it goes into black and white. Now uh, if I do the same thing, however, have this clip before it's selected, I go back up here drag the saturation slider, you notice nothing's being changed, nothing's being affected. The reason why is we made that selection to the clip here. So what's happening is it's actually affecting the clip next to it. So basically the moral of the story is um, make sure whatever clip you're working on is selected. One way to easily keep up with that is simply hit the C key on your keyboard as it's playing and it'll automatically select whatever clip it's under. So I'm gonna hit play here, I'm gonna hit C, and it's gonna select the clip. So as I go here, I hit C, C, C. As I hit the C key, it's gonna select whatever clip is below the timeline cursor. Now another thing to keep in mind is, say you wanna do some work on this clip right here and you go ahead and click it. Now clicking it and highlighting it will load it into the inspector. However, if you go into the inspector and start making changes, you notice nothing's changing. The reason why is our view, because our timeline cursor is over here, it's viewing the clip over here. So as we're dragging these sliders, we're making changes to this, to this clip that we selected, but we're not seeing them because the timeline cursor isn't over there. So uh, one way to quickly basically highlight a clip and have the timeline cursor move at the same time is hold down the option key. So rather than just clicking it, which as you can see, we'll just select various clips, hold down the option key and click, it'll move your timeline cursor there as well. So that way it's selected, it's queued up, it's loading that clip to the inspector, plus your timeline cursor is lined up so you're actually viewing the changes in real time as well. You're not viewing another part of the timeline while you're having another part of the timeline selected. So it's important to kind of have that understood. Uh, it'll uh, clear up a lot of confusion. Um, as much as I know this, and it's kind of second nature to me, I still get caught by it occasionally. I'm like, you know, dragging sliders, like why isn't this changing? And I realize, okay, my timeline cursor is not set up and I just have to get in the habit of holding down the option key and, and clicking, so. So let's jump into the meat and potatoes of the color section of the video inspector. Um, basically, you wanna go down here, as you notice, there's nothing really to change up here. There's no sliders, there's no buttons, there's no color wheel or anything like that. So what you have to do to, to access that is go down to correction one. By default, it starts with a single correction. Um, and all the way down over to the right, you see a right pointing arrow. And this basically says show correction. You click on this, and it's gonna open up the three major sections here, which is color, saturation, and exposure. We'll start with color here. Basically, uh, Final Cut Pro has gone away with the round color wheel. At first, it's a little awkward. Um, the one thing I do miss is the color droppers. You were able to basically click something that you know is white and it would neutralize it and you could tweak it. It does not have that any longer. However, um, I've found this to be very intuitive and work really well. And basically what it works is there's a global shadow, midtone, and highlight slider starting from left to right. So this is your global, this is your shadow, you know, it's designated by a dark dot, a gray dot for your midtones and your, and your highlights. And basically this line here is like a neutral, neutral point. So um, basically pushing up will add a color wherever it's at. Uh, and pulling it down below will remove that color. So if there's, say, a, oh, let me see, there's a yellow cast to this shot here, 
um, I will go in and actually I know that it's yellow, so I'm gonna move it to the yellow area and start pulling it away, like a subtractive method. As you see, I drag the yellow out, it starts to neutralize that shot. Um, likewise, if I were to push up towards the yellow, I'm adding more yellow to it. So it's pretty pretty intuitive, pretty basic to use. You can also use the sliders down here. Um, basically, this will align it um, horizontally on the plane and then you can basically dial it in up and down here. So going to the saturation slider, there's a global saturation for the clip. And then in here, you even have your shadow, mid-tone, and highlight saturation here. Now these sliders here, unlike the color sliders, these allow you to go you know, 360 degrees. You can go in any direction. The saturation and exposure sliders work the same way. They only go up and down. Um, so same thing here, you can actually use the percentages and hover your cursor and you can you know, drag it that way. I find it more intuitive just to grab it up here because I'm not a numbers guy, I just go by the way it looks. So um, same thing with exposure here. Now notice how these two look almost identical. Now they differentiate themselves obviously because you can tell it's selected up top, but the little icon here lets you know this is working with saturation and exposure looks like a little like uh, sun or light bulb icon to let you know um, this is brighter, this is darker. It's pretty pretty intuitive. You push up to make it brighter, down to make it darker. And just like the saturation slider, there's um, you know your, your global uh, exposure, there's your uh, shadows, your midtones, and your highlights. Now, when I work with shots, we really try to get the image as close to finished as possible. We actually do not shoot flat, at least for weddings. Um, so we shoot with a pretty punchy, um, contrasty image in the camera. So occasionally when it's a little overexposed, one of the most common things I use is the exposure midtones. That that solves a lot of issues with uh, exposure. I'll find a shot here is a little overexposed. Like to, to me, this shot here is overexposed and um, I feel like the highlights are blown just a little bit. Uh, midtones are a little light. So just by doing a midtone adjustment here, grabbing the midtone, the middle um, ball here and dragging down and eyeballing it, I feel like that's a lot better. Now I can pull the highlights back a hair and that looks to me a lot better than how it started. Just a simple, mostly mid-tone adjustment. I can go back here, hit the back arrow to get back out here and hit this little blue square to turn it on or off my effect. So you can kind of view the way it looked before and after. And one last little thing, once you go step into the correction here, if you look at the very bottom right here, there's a little button that says presets with a downward uh, triangle. If you click that, it opens up a bunch of presets. Final Cut Pro 10 has its own list of looks. Uh, I don't want to say they're as sophisticated as like magic bullet looks, but it's pretty cool nonetheless. You can go through here and click around and you know experiment with different looks. Um, what's cool is you can get a look that you, you might like. If it's a little harsh, you can go in here and tweak it because you can actually see what it's done to the color saturation exposure to uh, to achieve this look. So if you go here and I feel like, whoa, they really push the, the highlights a lot, you can kind of pull that back and, and you know make adjustments. And even you know beyond that, you can make your own look and shoot and save the preset and use it in the future. So that's a pretty basic over, overview of the color area of the video inspector. Uh, in the next tutorial, we're gonna delve deeper into balanced color, match color, and the various color masks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.